Sunday, September 18, 2011. This is Mercedes Diesel Guy, and this is my 1991 Volkswagen Vanagon. I only really started driving it, driving it again two or three weeks ago. The first test drive was about 30 miles on the highway. That went just perfectly fine. The second one was last weekend. Uh, that was about 120 miles round trip and uh, had some problems. The oil pressure... Uh, monitor on the dashboard went off. It, uh, it was blinking and buzzing. So I pulled over, shut it off, checked, and I saw that I had plenty of oil. So I uh, cautiously started the van again. It was running fine. No um, indication of further problems from the light, so I kept going. And as I got off the highway at my exit, uh, the light started acting up again. So I put it in neutral, revved the engine, and the light would go out uh, when I brought up the RPMs, which one of two things is possible. I have a problem with the monitoring system, or I actually have a pressure problem. That might be as simple as the uh, as the Fram oil filter down there. I've been using those almost exclusively for eight years now, but some peop uh, a lot of people have reported problems with using that filter with this engine. It's possible I've just been lucky all these years. So, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that with the uh, with the correct uh, German oil filter right here. But also, uh, today, I'm going to uh, gonna plumb in a new oil pressure gauge to mount on the dashboard. This picture makes it look way bigger than it really is. Uh, there it is right there. So, I'm not going to do a perfectly clean installation today. I mean, you'll see wires running and, and whatnot. Um, basically, I'm going to tee it into the system. Uh, basically in tandem with the low pressure sensor which is located uh, between the uh, driver's side push rods so uh, basically when I get this all together and I get the new filter in and refill the oil and drive it I'll be able to get an actual number for oil pressure and compare that to factory specs that'll give me an idea of whether or not uh, the engine itself actually has a problem so I'll I'm going to get to work now. The first thing to do is drain out the oil. Uh, as you can see, I have the oil draining out now. So, in order to, uh, this is to answer a specific question I had uh, from a viewer. In order to access the low pressure sensor on the 2.1 liter gasoline engine, there are four bolts. Uh, they're 13 millimeter. There's one right here at uh, uh, this side of the pushrod uh, tin. And there should be another one right here. In my case, it's broken off. And then there's two more where the exhaust, uh, where the exhaust manifold comes off the cylinders. So there's four bolts on this thing here. And as you can see, I have the oil filter off. Uh, it's still dripping there. And I have the uh, push rod cover tin off now. The, uh, the pushrod tin pretty much goes almost right up against the pushrods here, and uh, right here is the low pressure sensor. You just have to pull this wire off here, and then you just get a socket on there and uh, remove the uh, sensor itself. Now hopefully the fittings I um, got will work for this. So. Uh, We'll see how that goes. I just basically did a test fitment of my new parts here, uh, and I I loosely installed the new oil filter just to check for clearance and everything. And it looks like it won't interfere. Let me show you what I did here. I ran a um, a four-inch brass nipple uh, into the engine case uh, where the low pressure sensor had originally gone. Then I ran a 90-degree elbow off of that, uh, one and a half inch. Uh, the nipple off of that out to this uh, T here and the um, this here is the sending unit for my new uh, dashboard gauge and this is the original low pressure sensor so and then I'm gonna have to uh, run the new wires for the gauge and obviously I'm gonna have to uh, uh, unfortunately I have to cut the push rod tin in order to um, get this all to fit here so Gonna take some measurements, cut the push rod tin. Okay, just want to show you what I did here. As you can see, I removed a good portion of the fittings there. So what I did was I uh, I measured the uh, push rod tube cover, and I cut a hole in it there to allow uh, passage of the uh, 
of the fittings. Okay, I've got uh, everything tightened down hopefully enough so it won't leak. Well, good news everyone. Um, I had no choice but to start the engine and then the pressure light on the dash did not uh, did not uh, come on. So, I figured the system was self-bleeding. So, I uh, with the engine running, I kind of ran back here and took a look. And it is dripping out, the oil is dripping out here by the sensor. And keep in mind, I only have this finger tight right now. Uh, and thankfully, it does not seem to be dripping from anywhere else. So, all I've got to do is uh, you know, pull the wire, tighten up the sensor, and then get the wire um, clear out of the way of the exhaust. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is good here. So, uh, I'm going to tighten this up, actually, with a wrench. Uh, I believe it is 24 millimeter. Let me just get this on here to double check that. Yep, 24 millimeter. So, gonna get uh, to that, get that wire uh, secured out of the way, and then I'm gonna get started on wiring up the new gauge. Okay, I'm actually not going to um, do any video coverage for uh, wiring up the new gauge. The uh, reason for that is the um, uh, is that there's a million different kind of gauges out there and there's probably going to be differences in the wiring for all of them so you know make a, a ground here in the engine compartment and then uh, run a wire up here through the passenger compartment not going to hide it or anything um, all the way to the dash and then uh, do a very quick splice off of the dash for power and then I guess velcro the new gauge uh, to the dash for now just so I can uh, take the van out and get some readings Okay, um, I have the gauge installed and wired up. This is a really quick and dirty job here. You can't see it, but the gauge is actually just taped <laughs> to my gauge cluster. Um, right now I'm getting a baseline reading of 50. I don't know what it's supposed to be when the engine is cold, but uh, let's see what happens. I know the uh, spec with a hot engine is uh, 29, so hopefully uh, this isn't uh, misreading at the moment. Um, unfortunately, I have no other way of telling. I'm going to take this out for a drive now and uh, see what happens. Uh, wish me luck. Okay, um, I'm back home after a test drive that I'm going to have to say was successful. Uh, but of course, the one thing I never had, I didn't really consider going into this. Uh, in order to be really scientific about this test, I would need, uh, I would need a tachometer because at 2,000 RPM the uh, with a hot engine uh, pressure is supposed to read 29 uh, PSI I'm just going to uh, to uh, first step on the gas uh, just to show you that the gauge does react So the gauge definitely does work. Uh, whether or not it's calibrated correct correctly is another question. Now hopefully, you know, th hopefully this is around, uh, you know, 2,000 RPM. In which case, I've got a healthy reading. Uh, but of course, it's impossible to say. Uh, one thing I can tell you for sure is that the uh, oil light right here on the dash uh, did not react at all during the test drive and I went about 20 miles nothing uh, on no major highways but I was on a secondary highway and most of the time I was doing you know 50 to 55 so uh, 20 miles you know maybe 20 30 minutes out there and it didn't go off now granted this uh, this isn't fully scientific all of this uh, a tachometer would seriously help but uh, the factory oil monitoring system is intact and it's functioning. Uh, I know that because if it were malfunctioning, that light would be going crazy, and it's not. So I have it. Uh, uh, I have successfully hooked up this gauge so it's running in tandem with the original system. So uh, that being the case, uh, like I said, I've got a reading of uh, just below 10 here.
So hopefully, you know, this thing is um, accurate. If nothing else, uh, I can get baselines today and just uh, see what pressure is doing over time. But like I said, the van behaved itself, and I did not have any problems out there on the road, so... Um, I'm going to clean this all up next weekend, obviously put the radio back in, get that working. So, uh, if nothing else, uh, now I've got a way to uh, monitor oil pressure over time, but I'm just going to have to keep an eye on this, uh, because this is not conclusive. Right now, things are suggesting that the van is healthy, and that's great. But I'm going to have to drive it, I'm going to have to use it, I'm going to have to see how it reacts. So, uh, thanks for watching, I know this was a long video. Uh, you know, any questions, let me know. Thanks.